Welcome to the program. For the first time since the outbreak of the Syrian conflict, sources have told RT that Israel used a Turkish military base to launch a recent attack against Syria. Our Middle East correspondent Paula Slia has the details. RT sources tell us that Israel used Turkish military bases to launch attacks inside Syria. The latest attack was carried out in early July when there was a pre-dawn strike on the Syrian city of Latakia that allegedly targeted Russian-made Yakont anti-ship missiles. U.S. officials speaking on condition of anonymity say that this attack on this weapons depot was in all likelihood an Israeli airstrike. It happened not far from a Russian base and there is suspicion from many quarters that Israeli fighter jets were responsible. A number of Syrian troops were killed and wounded in those explosions. No one has officially come forward and claimed responsibility for the attack. RT requested a reaction from the Israeli government, but the government declined to comment. What is important is that the attack from the reports we have from our sources here in RT originated on the Turkish side of the border. Our sources telling us that Israeli planes left a military base inside Turkey and approached Latakia from the sea to make sure that they stayed out of Syrian airspace so that they could not become a legitimate target for the Syrian Air Force. This, if true, is yet another brazen Israeli attack on a foreign country without any declaration of war. Israel and Turkey have not been the best of friends in recent years. We had the flotilla incident back in 2010 in which nine people were killed. That was condemned internationally. And although there were conflicting reports as to exactly what happened, Israel never stepped forward with an apology until March. At the time, Turkey recorded its ambassador, it suspended ties with Israel. And what we see now is a sudden change of heart in Turkey towards Israel. There can now be legitimate questions asked about the sincere motivation for the apology that Israel gave over that flotilla incident. Questions need to be asked how and why an Islamic country like Turkey is allowing its arch enemy Israel to use Turkish bases to bomb another Muslim nation. And no doubt there is going to be massive fallout for Turkey because of this cooperation with Israel. Turkey has firmly denied Israel used its military base to launch a raid against Syria. And let's now get more on the reaction from RT's correspondent, Polly Boyka, who's in Istanbul for us. Hello there, Polly. Nice to see you. So we've sent out requests for official confirmation. What have we heard so far? As we've been investigating, we have just received a letter from the foreign ministry in Turkey saying that the Turkish foreign minister minister has addressed uh, these allegations in the Turkish media today and we know that he has said that he flatly denies any cooperation with the Israeli minister uh, with the is Israeli military on any attacks uh, in Latakia alleged Israeli attacks in Latakia now we've also just received a letter from the Turkish embassy in Moscow echoing the words of the foreign minister saying that the news the reports uh, of Turkish cooperation with Israel are uh, sheerly groundless and nothing to do with reality. They also underline the fact that Turkey will not be a partner to any military operation with Israel. Mm, but how is Turkey involved in the conflict in neighboring Syria? Well, Turkish Prime Minister Erdogan has been quite a vocal supporter of the Syrian rebels. He's uh, called for Bashar al-Assad to step down publicly on a number of occasions. Behind the scenes, uh, it's widely reported that Turkey is a major conduit for rebel weaponry uh, flowing into Syria. Turkey's got an open-door policy to Syria, meaning that there's uh, some 400,000 refugees already that have flooded over the uh, Turkish-Syrian border and that border is one that's been uh, quite tense recently. We've had a number of exchanges of artillery and mortar fire across the border. There have been a number of explosions actually that Ankara has blamed on Damascus while Damascus has pointed the finger at Islamist militants that have been uh, that they say Turkey has been allowing to come uh, in 
uh, in and out of Turkey freely. And of course, uh, Turkish opposition figures, Turkish rebels, they're allowed to come into Turkey. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Syrian opposition figures and Syrian rebels, uh, they're allowed to come freely into Turkey. And a lot of them we know use uh, Turkey in order to receive medical assistance, in order to fundraise, and in order to plan operations from there. So, and there was recently a, a very tense moment with Turkish-Syrian relations when uh, uh, the Syrian government uh, uh, shot down a Turkish reconnaissance plane. At the time, they requested Turkey requested that NATO uh, ask for help from their NATO. Uh, at the time, they requested that NATO uh, provide some sort of assistance in a response, but no response was ever given collectively by NATO to that. So overall, Turkish officials have made it clear that they want to avoid any direct military involvement in Syria. All right, Angie's Polly Boyko live from Istanbul. Polly, thank you very much. And let's now get more perspective from James Corbett, editor of the Corbett Report. James, nice to see you as always. So uh, if uh, Israel did indeed team up with uh, Turkey to conduct a strike on, on Syria, what's in it for Ankara? Well, again, we do have to stress that these are preliminary reports, so they do need to be confirmed. But if this, in fact, did take place, then this is obviously a pretty big um, move from just the recent apology over the Mavi Mamara incident to uh, full-fledged mil uh, joint military operations. And that, that would be quite striking to a lot of people, but I think it just serves to show, again, if it is true, that uh, Turkey really has been trying to play a role in in shaping uh, what's happening in Syria for, for some time now. And I think they really want to step up their regional dominance by being a staging ground and an arming ground for the Free Syrian Army and other Syrian rebels. And also, uh, I think they see the, the political tea leaves and read uh, which direction the wind is blowing and understand that it could certainly help them that in, in the event that uh, ultimately there is some sort of military invention in Syria, if they've been on the right side of that event uh, from the NATO perspective all along, then I think the, uh, their uh, regional dominance will be, will be seen to be greater as a result. So I think Ankara is really playing a, a political game here that, uh, that sees them growing in importance the more that they, they help uh, the U.S. and Israel and their allies in, in waging this war on Syria. After the previous strike by Israel, Damascus claimed it was a declaration of war. From your point of view, how uh, Syria is about to react now? Well, this has to be seen as a uh, as as an act of war. It's a declaration of war um, uh, by by decree by default, if not by decree. And uh, and certainly, this is a huge step uh, for for uh, any two nations. So I think that this has to be seen as an act of war. I think the only appropriate response would be for for uh, Syria to to treat it as such. And in fact, there is some indications that there has already been some sort of retaliation. Uh, just shortly after this airstrike occurred, uh, the there was an F six that was downed at sea, an Israeli F-16 was downed at sea. The official explanation was that it was engine malfunction, and now the entire Israeli Air Force has grounded all of its F-15s and F-16s. But uh, sources inside Syria are indicating that, in fact, that was shot down by Syria. So, uh, so there's still some, some uh, up in the air about that report. But if true, again, that means that Syria has already taken this quite seriously. Yeah, again, Turkey is one of the strongest opponents of the Syrian government, and so surely Ankara would have nothing against teaming up with Israel, which is no friend of Ankara either. What do you think? Well, I, th I think obviously, yeah, uh, these types of extreme circumstances can create strange bedfellows, and uh, most people wouldn't see Turkey and Israel getting into uh, into bed in a military operation. But again, they do share that uh, that uh, animosity towards Syria, and I think they're both interested in seeing the Assad government overthrown. So I think in this case, it does make sense, and it goes to show that I think Erdogan is more uh, likely to cozy up to Israel than than the massive Turkish uh, the Turkish population. I think there's a big divide between what the Turkish people think about this and what the Erdogan government is doing. Absolutely, and actually I, w I wanted to ask you what would uh, be the repercussions of Turkey's possible involvement, how, for example, would the Kurdish population view this? 
Well, yeah, absolutely. Not only the Kurdish population, I think the, the Turkish population generally, if this were to be confirmed, would be quite uh, upset about this. And of course, we've already seen some massive protests taking place in Turkey. So I think that the Erdogan government is especially uh, on, a, on a knife edge at this point and, and can't really uh, handle much in, in terms of a political uh, scandal. So I think that if it were to be revealed that they were complicit with Israel in attacking another Muslim nation, that would be the type of thing that we might see uh, might actually topple the Erdogan government to, uh, overall. So I think this is a, a really precarious situation for Turkey at the moment. All right, uh, James Corbett, editor of the Corbett Report. James, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Israel's attack on Latakia would be the fourth unconfirmed strike on Syria within the last several months. A military compound outside Damascus was bombed from the air twice in January and May. Rockets struck a warehouse at the capital's international airport allegedly containing surface-to-surface -surface missiles. And on all occasions, the attacks were justified as operations to wipe out Iranian missiles bound for Hezbollah in Lebanon. And Middle East expert and historian Tariq Ali says Israel has been looking to get even with the militant group by choking the Syrian government. Israel's motivation, as always, to show the Arabs, both inside Israel and outside, look, this is how tough we are. We can hit any target in the Middle East that we want, and no one can do anything about it. This is a country which is above the law, or considers itself above the law, and its United States masters and its European friends will do nothing to stop it. I have very little doubt that these friends informed the United States that we they were going to attack Latakia. Hezbollah is like a red bull to the Israelis, and uh, uh, the Israelis haven't been able to wipe it out, though they've tried many a time. Uh, they're now hoping that they can do it by completely weakening or destroying the Syrian regime. The Syrian state could break up uh, or be completely destroyed, so they're not unaware of, 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 of what is happening in that country, and indirectly I would say yes, they are providing help to the uh, rebels.